Welcome to Take Me to Strawa, the travel show that takes you on a journey for great food, culture, and meeting interesting people in little known places. Follow me as I rediscover my homeland. Aram kita rawon. Nature plays an important part in Sarawak's culture. Elements from the jungles and rivers are evident in all aspects of life here. In this episode of Take Me to Sarawak, I'll be taking you to coastal town of Muka, where the seafaring Melanau have enriched their lives for centuries with the natural bounty of their surroundings. Ju, makawage telo? Muka to me is a place that has the ancient story that attached to it. It has evolved over the years, and I can see transformation within it. And it's a place that's vibrant with people. This is a, one of our most uh, scenic sites in the village. The whole ambience of this place is like actually no change from a few hundred years ago. And the water is actually dark. It's not dirty, it's called brackish. It shows that this area is a pit swamp area. So when the water is red, it's actually containing tannin. Diana is the woman behind Lamindana a museum dedicated to preserving the culture of her Melanau roots. Today, she's going to walk us through the history and culture of the Melanau tribe. We are at uh, Kampong Sri Talian. Now, they changed it to Kampong Tradisi. Basically, uh, this is where all the ancient artifacts of the Melanau people, uh, you can see it, uh, left behind. And we are going to visit the Jerunai, which is actually an ancient burial pole of the Melanau people, which is very much related to our social status. Now come, let's go. Here we go. This side. This is uh, our, one of our Jerunai along this route. And this is called Jerunai Putri. Basically meaning it's a princess burial pole. So this is where one of our aristocrats' ancestors were buried. What our ancestors did then was, when someone of importance died, so they, they will create a, a pole like this as a remembrance, or as a, a sign of love for the departed, as well as uh, to the belief that they are going to another world. We have another burial pole here. This is older, you can see all the carvings are gone now. This is actually ironwood or belian, which is endemic to Borneo Island. You cannot find this species anywhere else in the world. And this is a very matured whole belian tree, which they, they carve into a burial pole. That is amazing. And now it's time to check out Lamindana. So here we are. Welcome to Lamindana, meaning traditional house in Melanau dialect. Come. Lamin is house, Dana is traditional. So in that context, what we are trying to do here 20 years ago is to preserve and conserve Melanau uh, heritage and practices. This place is called uh, Lebo Alo or Rumah Panjang Tinggi, La Rumah Tinggi. So it's right smack where it was before, except that I rebuilt it back in 200 years later, after the original toll house was burned down in late 1890s. Everything here has a story. On our wall, we have pictures, but it tells part of our life. And this is all the various sun hat that we have. And because we live by the river, our paddle, our boat are very important. Lamindana itself, in meaning, is just traditional house. But in terms of development, it incorporates the idea of preservation, ecotourism, community development, women empowerment, youth development, and social enterprise. Indirectly, we are putting the community into one. Amazing work, Diana. Bravo. Before the name Muka Talian is already in existence. Today, Talian has about six villages along this river. It's a very close-knitted family. Uh, every household more or less related to another household. Hi, Tuan. Apa kabar? Japan. You know, dengar. Abu Samut. She is our master weaver. She was the one who taught uh, many people in this village how to weave. Fatima. These are all my relatives along this side. And then at the moment, she's uh, actually making blachan, front face. This way. 
sometimes you can meet people selling kueh, ice cream. Ice cream? <laughs> yes. Oh no! Ice cream sure sounds like a good idea, but I still want to see and learn more about the Melanau people. Let's see where's next. Okay, Diana, where are we going? Uh, we're going on a boat ride. This is Thailand River, so we're going on a cruise to see the river ride lifestyle of the Melanau people. Let's discover. Come. Okay. Let's do this. This is the main highway, the only means of communication for our people towards the sea. We are seafarers and traders, so this is the line that we go out towards the sea. And uh, as you know, the Mlana people are also fishermen, and so you see boats like this, the fishing boats. Not a dull moment along this river, as it is a shared path for fishermen and sago farmers. What are those, Lana? Uh, this is sago logs. We have been selling sago logs for hundreds of years and we still do today. This actually from the local farmers. So what they do is that uh, each individual family could have logged it and then sell it to one whole seller. And then they will go and bring all these sago logs out to the factory. From the factory, it will be processed and exported out. The way they harvest the sago is sustainable in a way that once it's mature, they will harvest and the, the sapling will come up again. So it's a continuous process. And I think this is a God-given gift to the Mlana people who live in this very harsh environment. But sago saves them because everything from sago is utilized. We do not throw any waste from sago. This is the back of a sago log just now. So when we go and grill our fish, we use this as a firewood. So it gives a certain aroma to our food. Now we are in the sago farm. And the only thing you need to do in sago farming is clear every now and then the undergrowth, transfer the, the young sapling so that it will not be clumped together. And when it's ready for harvest, you cut it down. And this is what I love about Ramlana people. The sound of it, the sound of the rippling sago, the coolness of it, the smell of the pig's mum, and you know that you are living a life. This is the lifestyle, the livelihood of the Mlana people and of course our world of Sego that linked to it. Everything is Sego in our life. It's our tree of life. The Mlana way of life is so captivating. I can't wait to see, taste and explore more after the break. Aside from sago, the other love of the Melanau people is fish. Fortunately, Mukah being a seaside town is blessed with tons of it. So for lunch, it has to be umai. Whether you are a fish eater or not, you gotta try this mouth-watering dish. Umai is a traditional dish made with raw fish and is similar to the Latin American staple ceviche. We're here at the fish market to pick out some of the best and the freshest fish for our meal. Hey, come and join me today. Uh, this is something very special about the Mlanao people and I would like to show you the central part of our Mlanao life. Basically, there's only two things. One is sago, another thing is umai, which is fish. The fish got to be very fresh. We have to go to the market to make sure that the fish is alive, fresh and cut correctly because that skill is not learned overnight. What we do when we prepare this is that we have to marinate the fish in lime for 20 minutes and then we will drain the lime off. This way of uh, what you call technique is to make sure there's no element of salmonella into it so that everybody will be safe. Yeah. Then the next thing is to prepare the paste. So you just use this red onion. Put a bit of salt into it, not too much and then you start pounding. Uh, maybe you should try this. Success! I did not break the table with all that pounding, but I better leave it to the pro. If you want the amazing aromas and flavours, you gotta work for it. Now what we do, we put it inside this fresh fish. Since I'm wearing this, so this is the best way of doing it. Yeah, you got to do this. Make sure every piece of the cut fish I blended well with the paste. Oh, I'm salivating. <laughs> the 
the most important part in umai eating, not umai making now, umai eating, you need sago. This is actually made from sago flour mixed with the husk of a paddy, paddy grain, and uh, water and salt. Very simple ingredient, but because of the paddy grain, which is very rich in uh, minerals and vitamins and uh, roughage, so this food is considered very healthy. Uh, we Mlanao people have been eating this for thousands of years. Voila, our mai is done. Of course, you have to eat with sago. The taste of umai is amazingly delicious. It's just the right blend of sour and spicy with a hint of salt. I could eat this every day. With our pa'it basa, time to walk it off and explore more about the Milano tribe. We're going to see a unique art form called Batet Linut, which utilizes sago as an integral part of its process. Let's go meet Andrea. Batik linut tu sebenarnya dia adalah batik yang berasaskan uh, produk yang dibuat kita dari sagu. Sagu tu, lepas tu kita buat jadi linut, uh, tepung sagu. Hari ini kita buat linut untuk buat batik, batik linut. Yang ini tepung sagu yang kita pakai dan yang dalamnya kita dah letaklah linut tepung dengan air saja. Dan untuk buat linut dia, kita hanya perlu tepung dengan air panas sahaja. Linut tu sebenarnya makanan orang Melanau. Dibuat dari tepung sagu lah. Sekarang kita buat linut ni untuk jadi batik juga. Sekejap dia air panas, terus dia akan jadi keras. So, yang ini dah siap. Kita cuma perlu tunggu sejuk lah. Batik linut ni ada, kita ada dua teknik lah. Satu, kita menggunakan teknik neptol, perwarnaan neptol. Dan satu lagi, kita guna remison. Jadi kalau untuk neptol tu sekejap sajalah. Satu hari ataupun dalam dua hari pun sudah siap. Kalau untuk guna remison, kita ambil masa satu minggu. Lebih kurang satu minggu sebab dia proses dia perlukan pengeringan yang banyak lah. Kalau dia tidak kering, dia tidak cantik. Hmm. Yang ini sudah siap lah. Jadi kita tunggu sejuk saja lagi. Time for some arts and crafts. Linut itu kita akan screen kan ke atas kain. Ha. Selepas itu uh, dia kita dah screen kita keringkan dia sekejap menggunakan si, uh, hair dryer. Kalau sudah siap untuk satu kain tu, barulah kita warnakan menggunakan warna metal lah. Hmm, looks easy enough. I'm going to give it a try. Lepas dah kita warnakan dia warna corak tu akan terus timbul di atas kain tu. Kita jemur, dah jemur sekejap untuk memastikan warna itu menyerap. Lepas itu kita cuci. Nah, siap. Senang saja. Tapi hasil dia sangat menarik. Lah. Dan uh, setiap satu kain semestinya tidak akan sama. Lah. Walaupun warna yang sama. The techniques of making batik linut is a combination of the traditional batik methods and tie dyeing, which creates a beautiful mix of patterns and colours. Dia memang perlu cuci pakai tangan. Tidak boleh kita cuci pakai washing machine. Itu semua sebab dia tak nak tanggal. Tapi kita dah approve teknik tu. So, sekarang dia menjadikan kerja tu lagi senang. Lah. Bagi saya, batik linut ni dia sangat unik. Sangat-sangat berbeza dengan batik lain. Lah. Tak pernah lagi yang ada batik seperti ini. Sebab batik lain yang menggunakan lilin yang ini menggunakan tepung sagu sebagai bahan utama untuk membuat batik. Uh, batik linut untuk masa sekarang uh, boleh cari di laminana sahaja. Siap, kering, cantik, sedang. Terima kasih kamu. Thank you. I'm so happy to have our very own Take Me To Batik Linut. When we come back, we'll go find more hidden treasures around Kampung Telia. We are 
welcome back and this time we are at Sapan Pulo, a small unassuming museum in Kampong Talian that is home to Melanau relics. It is one of Muka's hidden treasures and a pride and joy of the Melanau people. Come and meet the curator and guardian of this place, Mr. Tommy Black. Hi Tommy! Hi! Selamat datang ke Mini Museum Melanau Sapan Pulo. Thank you! This small wooden house is jam-packed with treasures of the past from Lanao clothing to beautiful carvings. Kita ada wawasan tertentu dan saya telah bercita-cita untuk membuat satu museum. Even museum itu adalah cuma mini museum. Melanau adalah dikenali sebagai ahli pelayaran. Mereka adalah pedagang, mereka adalah nelayan dan mereka adalah penanam rumbia. Mereka telah berdagang iaitu butter trade sego flower kepada barang-barang porselin ataupun ceramik-ceramik macam ni. Yang ini adalah very special about Melanau iaitu uh, memipih dahi. Istilah Melanaunya dikenali sebagai mejak. Mejak berarti untuk membuat dahi yang lepel. Di sini kita akan letak all Chinese coin ataupun uh, tempurung kelapa untuk apa tu mengetatkan dia. Okay, maka kita dapat adjust dekat sini ikut saiz kepala baby. Tujuan yang paling penting adalah untuk mencantikkan wajah seseorang gadis Melanau. Uh, kalau dahi dia flattered macam ni, itu yang dikategorikan perempuan wanita yang cantik. Wow, what an interesting culture. Lucky for me, I have Tommy to guide me through Melanau history. Dan kita tengok dekat sini, yang ini adalah sudut untuk kematian. Okay. Orang dulu, biasanya orang Melanau akan uh, letak satu pinggan besar di bawah kepala, dua piring di bawah ni, siku, dan dua piring di bawah lutut dia, dan uh, dua piring di bawah tumit dia. Selain pada ranking yang tertinggi, dia juga adalah berarti orang yang uh, dihormati dan orang yang kaya. Di sini adalah untuk uh, sudut perubatan. Biasanya kita akan kalau kita sakit kita akan jumpa si bomoh. Okay, si bomoh ni kita panggil abayo. Dia akan tilik penyakit kita melalui gendang ni. Kita akan mengetahui dari apa yang ditilik oleh si bomoh ni tadi. Yang ini kita panggil sebulang langit. Cara perubatan dia senang. Kita kunyah sirih pinang, lepas tu kita sembuh dia, mentera dia senang, kita panggil nama patung ni, Hai Sebulang Langit, dan kita panggil nama orang sakit tadi, tolong ubat dia, tolong sembuh dia, lepas tu kita sembuh, dan patung ni tadi kita akan mandi, air lelehan tadi, dari pandi ni tadi, kita akan ambil lap atau mandi kepada badan pesakit tadi. Dan seterusnya, sekiranya kita tidak elok, tidak bagus menggunakan patung ni, maka akan ada tata cara lain yang dikenali sebagai aa, pertama adalah berbayo, lepas tu aa, berjijik, kedang mayang, bergudak dan yang paling last adalah kita duduk di atas buaya ni yang dikenali sebagai ayun asok naga. Aa, dia akan memakan masa selama tujuh hari, ya, aa, tujuh malam. Ada yang lebih sampai sembilan malam. Pencapaian saya, cita-cita saya telah terlaksana. Kita akan teruskan juga okay, supaya hazanah melanau ni dan uh, tinggalan moyang ni akan kekal selama-lamanya untuk kita pamerkan di seluruh dunia. Good job and keep it up, Tommy. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and culture with everyone. There are so many things to discover just around Kampong Telian. At the core of it all is the sacred sago plant. Whoa, it sure is hot in here. We're here to meet Auntie Suraya who works at the sago processing plant in Kampong Telian. Processing sago is tough, hot and sweaty work. Saya sudah buat sago ini kira-kira 30 tahun. Nanti satu hari buat berapa banyak? Dalam satu hari saya boleh buat 25 kilo lah sagu. Sagu ini kalau orang tua asal kenyang. Lain lagi yang dari makan nasi sekarang ni lah. Apa lauk cun dengan sego? Sagu boleh makan dengan macam bermacam ikan lah. Ikan ikan salai kah, ikan apa kah, boleh makan dengan sagu. 
this giant cement stove, the belanga is what they use to slowly roast and cook the raw sago pearls. It is built in a way that maximizes airflow to keep the fire going strong. Belanga dibuat mengikut arah sungai. Tidak dapat potong macam ini. Di arus mengikut air tu. Lama kah tunggu masak? Masak sagu ini lebih kurang satu jam lebih lah. Baru dia masak. Kedak ni tahunya sudah masak. Ah kita rasa, kita picit, picit, yang termakan sedikit. Kalau rasa dia memang sudah masak, masaklah dia tu. Kalau sudah masak, warna dia bertukar coklat. Before all the hot and sweaty action can begin, you must first go through the mengulut process where salt, shredded coconut and rice bran is added to the sago flour. Oh, ini proses mengayak sago. Mengaya is where the sago mixture is sieved through the woven mats to form the round sago pearls. Aunty, boleh kami cuba? Ya, cuba. Aunty, macam mana pegang? Pegang macam macam ni? Ah. <laughs> Boy, this is not easy. After trying and seeing how sago is made, it has really given me new appreciation for the little seeds of life. Sago for the Melanau are not just food, but it is embedded deep in every aspect of their lives. Just when I thought I have seen it all, Diana has set up a special night cultural show to showcase the Melanau dance and music instruments. I have always loved the sound of traditional music, and this hits the spot. Dari adat menunjukkan rupa, rupa menunjukkan bangsa. Meaning, from your heritage shows who you are, who you are reflects your race and your nation or your country. And that very reason is why I'm holding to this belief that I should continue to preserve my lamindana and my heritage. Legend has it that Muka was named after the beautiful face of a woman who guides shipwreck merchants and fishermen to shore. It certainly has guided my heart to it, with its rich heritage, culture, and of course, lovely people. That's all the time we have for today. I'll see you again in the next episode of Take Me to Sarawak. Kita pergi mana, Angkel? Tidak berapa nampak dia punya atap dari sini. No? Dia tanya, dia can stop. No. Cannot stop halfway.